So here are the pattern pieces. This is the body of the tool roll. This is the slots for all the items. And then this is the zipper pouch portion. For the um, body of the tool roll, I like to use wax canvas because I just, I like the material, but you can definitely use um, a different fabric. I would say canvas is a good alternative. Um, you just want something that has a bit of body, nothing too uh, lightweight. So for the um, bottom portion of the, uh, the, the zipper pouch area, I did a patchwork piece here and I also cut a piece of muslin for the uh, lining. And then I also um, just cut a piece of fabric for the, the top part of the um, pouch and um, two small pieces for the ends of the zippers. Um, this is about one and a half by two inches. And I'm using a five inch metal zipper. You can definitely use a plastic zipper. And then I cut a piece of fabric that is just kind of like a, a heavier weight muslin and also a lighter weight canvas than, than what I'm using. And this is going to be on the back of this area. Working with a zipper, I usually use two different kinds of feet. This one here, you could see the notch is on the right side, and then this one here, the notch is on the left side. So for the first part of what we're going to sew, I'm going to use the notch that is on the right side. I'm going to take my first piece of small fabric and I'm going to fold it over I would say, I don't know, an eighth or so of an inch, just a little bit. And then I'm going to place it right on the end of the zipper just before you get to the metal there. And then I'm just going to sew that on here on both sides. I usually open the zipper just a little bit, just so that I can get the ends closer. So there you have them sewn on both ends. So for the um, rest of the pouch area, I'm gonna switch my foot to the other one. And some machines, um, they have them on both sides, so you just have to kind of uh, move the foot left to right, but usually industrial machines don't have that option, so you have to switch the foot. So this is the opening that's on the left side. So I'm going to start off by um, doing the uh, bottom portion of the pouch, and I kind of just usually leave these a little bit long just so that I can trim them afterwards, so I would just kind of center it. And so for, this is on the left side of the tool roll, so I want the zipper to be coming downwards, so the head of the zipper is going to be at the top there. And so if you want to, you can trim it now, but I'm going to just sort of center it. And then I'm going to place the lining on top like that. And usually when I sew, I like to start um, at the end because I find this part a little bit bulky. So I'm going to just flip this over. And I'm going to just check again to make sure that it's in the center or, you know, close enough. And then I'm going to place this on top. And then I'm going to sew this here. I usually do about three eighths of an inch uh, seam allowance. Make sure you always back tack at the beginning and end. And I just find that when you use this type of um, zipper foot, it just makes it easier. So now you're getting to the end where the zipper is a bit bulky. And what I do is I usually kind of um, keep my needle down and then I lift up the presser foot and then I 
push the needle head up a little higher just so that it's not in the way when I'm sewing. And then I'm going to just finish it off at the end here. And then when I turn this around, um, I usually don't do a top stitch here, um, but you're welcome to do that if you want to kind of keep it down. I usually just sort of iron it. And then the next step is to add the top portion, which I'm going to do kind of the same way. And because I'm only dealing with one layer of fabric, I'm starting off with the um, top of the zipper because it's a little bit easier to move. And then I'm going to go all the way down. And then usually at this point, what I do is I will kind of do a top stitch there. And then what I'm going to do now is just trim the ends off. So now for the rest of the sewing, I'm going to switch to the regular presser foot. So usually when I'm sort of sewing in batches, I like to do everything um, in order so that you're not constantly switching your um, foot. So this is the um, piece of fabric that um, was a little bit heavier than muslin. So that is going to be the lining for the, because this is um, going to be like a pouch in the tool roll. And so what I want to do is um, make sure that it's lined. So this piece goes right on top. And then you just, you're sewing at the top edge there. And then I usually fold this over. And then I do like a top stitch. So now the next step is I'm going to change my thread color to a darker color and then I'll start putting it all together. So I've switched over to a darker thread and, and so this is how it's going to work. So I'm going to start by doing a roll hem along the top edge here and then I'm going to attach these two pieces together. So you could see that there's a little bit of space at the top here so that when you're finished with the rolled hem, it should match up to the top of this pouch. So I'm rolling it over about a quarter of an inch. or I guess it's a little bit less than one centimeter. And so I'm starting at the part where it's angled. And I'm gonna sew with this darker thread right along the edge there. And then this is where it gets to the straight part. So I kind of roll it like that and then like this. So you're going to get this little bit of a uh, space. And so you just kind of keep your needle in there and then just pivot. I've sewn the rolled hem and so I'm using the other side of it and so now what we're going to do is we're going to attach these two pieces together so the good sides facing each other and then you're going to sew 
the 3 8 seam allowance. Okay, I'm going to fold that back. And what we're going to do is when we do the top stitch along here, that's when we're going to attach it to the back part of the tool roll so that this part is um, part of the piece. So before we do that, what I want to do is show you how I mark the different slots here. And so I'm taking a, a clear ruler and it's about four inches to that spot there. So what I'm going to do is just mark about two inches there. I don't think it really matters. It depends also on what items you are um, going to be carrying. So you can kind of determine at that point where these marks should be. But if anything, just make sure that you do have one mark that sews down this little corner here. So it doesn't really matter what spaces are in between, but as long as that gets stitched down because you don't want that little corner to be folding up. So I think I'll just continue and just do uh, two inches or maybe do one and a half. So that way I can do two. It's been a while since I've made these, so I can't remember what I used. I think this looks right because I think the last one, I left it a little bit wider, this last section here, so you can put a few things that are a little fatter Okay, so once you've got that, we're going to go on to the next step where we're going to attach this to the body of the tool roll and then finish the piece. When this piece goes on top of the body of the tool roll, you'll notice that there's actually um, a space around it. So the, the piece itself here is a lot smaller than the tool roll um, body. And the reason for that is that I'm going to be doing a rolled hem around it and I made it a bit smaller so that you don't get bulk. Um, and so that's the reason um, that I did that. S center this just to make sure that um, I have about um, like a little bit, like I guess about half an inch or so all the way around the edge here. Um, I usually don't, I, I, I'm sure you've noticed I haven't been pinning and part of the reason why I don't is that um, wax canvas is like working with leather and if you pin it you're going to see the marks and so I kind of don't pin it so sometimes it's a little frustrating but um, that's just the nature of working with something like that. So the first part that I'm going to sew is this edge here so I'm going to make sure to double tack very well and I'm going to be pretty close to the edge of the wax canvas and then I'm going to do another um, stitch here and I'm just going to put my edge of the foot just close to that last line that I sewed And then I'm going to stitch down the, the parts that I marked. The last sewing step is to do the rolled hem around the edge. I usually start at this bottom corner and so I roll this over and then I roll this and 
And then I just start sewing here. And then I roll this. And then just kind of um, push it down with your hands, like crease it. I find the corner is always a little tricky. And if you find that this is like too small of a seam allowance for you, um, you're welcome to like adjust it and just move it up a little higher um, if you find that it's a little too small for you to sew. And I'm just gonna put one of my labels in here. So it's really important that when you get to this part here, uh, where it's at, where um, the top part of that pocket is, um, to kind of give it maybe a double um, tack, just to kind of give it a little bit more strength. Another way you can adjust this pattern too is you can make this portion a little bit higher. Like if you, um, if you're an artist and you want to um, store paintbrushes and your paintbrushes are quite tall, you can adjust it by adding more at the top of this area. So I just sort of. Um, do a simple sort of blunt corner. I don't do like a miter corner or anything like that. I just find the wax canvas is, is already um, quite thick in those areas. And same with this part here, you want to do a, a double tack. And then Okay, and then I usually just go around and trim out all the threads. And then the last thing that I'm gonna show you is how I add the, um, the grommet or the rivet. No, the grommet. These are the tools that I'm using to um, attach the uh, grommet. So this is a punch to create a hole. And then this is um, a tool that I hammer uh, the, these two pieces together. So there's like a flat metal piece and then one that has a little bit of a shaft and you're going to need to use an anvil and a hammer. The size of this grommet is about a quarter of an inch and you could find it at any um, sewing store. I'm going to place the one with the shaft on the underside and I'm going to push it through like this and then I'm going to place the flat piece on top like this and then the one the metal shape here goes inside that shaft and then you're just going to gently tap it with the hammer like that and then I usually kind of move the tool and then just hammer it down 
just to make sure there's no like sort of like little sharp bits. And then this is what it looks like on the other side. I'm using a two millimeter leather cord. And if you don't have access to leather, um, you can use just like a piece of string or a ribbon or even twill tape would work well. And then you just sort of feed it through the hole and then tie a knot. And, and that's it. So now it's time to load up your tool roll. So this part here fits a little sketchbook or even um, like a small paint tray would be great. And then this you can place some thread, some clips. And then I roll this into threes, like this. And then I wrap the leather cord around. And then I slide it underneath. And then I create kind of like a loop and then slide that in. And that does kind of like a knot there. There you have it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please leave me a comment below if you have any questions and if you're not already subscribed to my channel, it would be great if you could. Thank you guys. Bye now.